saw. So those were scenes there from uh, the Parliament uh, uh, where the Constitutional Review Committee was uh, meeting and they've adopted a proposal that Section 25 of the Constitution be amended. And to help us unpack this and what it might mean, I'm now joined from our Pretoria studios by Professor Dirk Kotzer. Prof, thanks very much for joining us. Welcome to the program. Uh, so it was no surprise really that uh, it would get through this uh, review process. Um, your thoughts about what this might mean? Well, I, I think first of all, the, the fact that it is a, a proposal uh, pr tabled by the EFF is for me quite significant, and it wasn't by the, but tabled by the ANC. Uh, and I think that creates some space for the, the ANC still to maneuver, as we've seen the way in which President Ramaphosa presents the view of government, and by implication I would say the ANC, is, is in a sense different from what I think what is the, the view uh, in the committee itself. So it, it gives us all already the, the idea or the impression that there's going to be still a lot of discussion and debate about what exactly is required from this. We know that the parliamentary process itself is going to be a very prolonged one because after it has been this um, committee report has been debated in the National Assembly, then they will have to establish another committee uh, where the, the drafting of the amendment bill will have to happen. Once the, dra the drafting has been done, it has to be published in the government gazette. Then there must be a 30 days period where public uh, participation can take place. Once it has, that has been concluded and the comments have been sent by the committee to, to the speaker and the chairperson of the NCOP, then uh, it, it can be tabled after another 30 days. So it's going to be a, quite a prolonged process. Um, and I think one of the most technical aspects of, of this process is going to be, as President Ramaphosa indicated, what will be the wording of this? Uh, because there's actually two processes. The first is the amendment of the Constitution, and one can anticipate that the constitutional amendment will say, well, there must be national legislation in order to develop the details of that. Um, and before both of those have not been completed, there's actually not possi uh, any possibility to implement it. So that is why I think it will go mo most possibly beyond next year's election before this process at its earliest can be completed. Will that then feed into what the opposition parties are saying, that this is politicking by the ANC and the EFF ahead of those elections? I think there's a good reason to say that, yes. Um, and I think what we've seen also now with this introduction is how the EFF tries to create some distance between them and the ANC. And I think what we've seen here is that the EFF insists that it must be, in a sense, be nationalization. That means all land must belong to the state, versus President Ramaphosa, who creates a very nuanced picture of some land that belongs to the state must actually be privatized and given to new landowners. Some must be expropriated with compensation, some without compensation, and all other options in between. So I think it's going to become a contest during the time of the, of the election also of who's the most authentic, authentic view uh, on this matter, who is, has the most support in, uh, in terms of voters uh, or in terms of the society in general when it comes to this matter. So I can foresee it's going to become a, a hot potato, a hotly contested matter uh, during the time of the election. As of today, uh, who would you say has got the most political mileage out of this? And do you think that maybe 24 years on, because the ANC was, uh, you know, has been the majority party for, for 24 years, and it's only really now that they're sitting down to look at this issue in the way that they are, that their hand was forced by the EFF? Yes, I think, first of all, I think the EFF is going to claim the victory for this, the fact that they presented the, the table, the motion in this committee, uh, the fact that they said that they actually convinced the ANC of this, that their pressure put the ANC in a position where they did, didn't have any other option. I think obviously the ANC will claim the, in, in the same way um, that they are the authors of this, that they have taken the lead, they are the governing party. 
the opposition parties obviously cannot take any credit from this process. So I, I think, again, it's going to bring it back to who between the EFF and, and the ANC will be able to convince the South African public the best or the most um, of what, what they have in mind. Um, as I've said earlier on, I think the ANC's position is much more complex. It's very much more difficult to, to transmit or it to, the, to the general public to explain it and not to be seen that there are some internal contradictions in that. While the EFF's position is much more simpler, um, it's much more straightforward, it's, it's much easier to communicate to the public. So that's the EFF and the ANC seemingly on the same side, even if they don't agree exactly on the detail and the way forward. But then you have the swathe of opposition parties that just weren't having it at all. Why is there such a divergence in views? And, uh, you know, some, some of the opposition parties, some people might say, were predictable, but there does seem to be a, collection, a collectiveness of them coming together against uh, this uh, amendment. I think that the formation that's against it has been quite predictable. It has been the DA, COPE, uh, the Freedom Front Plus, ACDP and others. Uh, those who were in, in support of this has been the ANC, the EFF, uh, the UDM and the National Freedom Party. So there's an interesting split between the National Freedom Party and the IFP on, on this particular matter. Um, I, I think that the opposition also have some differences in terms of how they understand their own idea. We've seen that the, the DA, in a sense, supports the ANC's pos original position to say that the current formulation of Section 25 in the Constitution does already allow for all different forms of uh, expropriation, which includes expropriation without compensation, which is, in a sense, a relatively new position of the DA. While, for example, the IFP is much more rigid in terms of their position, and it, I think it's also to some extent informed by, for example, the, the criticism by the, the Zulu King and the, 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 the dilemma around the Ingwavuma Trust, uh, which has become quite an unexpected a complication in, in this debate. So I, from that point of view, I think there's within the, the opposition parties or those who are opposing the, the amendment of the Constitution, also different understandings. But what is common amongst them is that they are not in favor of an, in any form of amendment to the Constitution. All right, Professor Kotzer, that's where we're going to leave it. Thanks very much indeed, as always, for your insights this day. Thank you so much. All right, that was uh, Prof. Kotzer speaking to us uh, from our Pretoria studios. So